Hey guys, hope everybody's doing well out there. Um, today I'm going to show you how to do a nice quick uh, acrylic painting that you can do from the comfort, comfort of your own home. Um, we are going to be using acrylic paint. And you may or may not have some acrylic paint in your home. Um, craft paints, which a lot of us have kind of lying around. We've probably had them for years and always meant to use them. Um, but if you do happen to have some craft paints lying around your home, uh, these are acrylic paints. If they're a little bit old, just give the bottle a good shake before you use any of it, um, or else it may have separated a little bit. Um, I do have a lot of my own, my own paints here. Um, today we are going to be using four colors. We're going to be using, honestly, just blue, red, black, and white. Uh, the colors that I have are cobalt blue and cadmium red. If you don't have either of those colors or those specific shades of blue or red, that's okay. It's all about how we're going to mix it today. And if you have a different shade, that's perfectly fine. It'll create just as beautiful of a picture. Before we get started here, you're going to need a cup full of water. Uh, this is half full, you know, so I don't spill any. I don't want to get kind of a mess everywhere. Paper towel double ply if possible, you know, just nice and absorbent, and a paper towel or a paper plate. <laughs> you know, we're just going to use this as our palette. We're going to mix our paints onto there. As for brushes, I'm using two different brushes. I have just a thicker one and a skinny one. If you don't have either of these or if you have maybe you have a thick brush or you just have a skinny brush, you can you can make it work. Um, the thicker one is good because it has this nice flat edge, which is perfect for painting in our backgrounds. Um, but if you say maybe you have the thick one, you don't have the skinny one, we can always use the edges and I'll show you how to use that to the same effect as the skinny one. Okay, so let's say we get started here. So the first color we're gonna use is blue. Now I'm gonna use three things of blue paint on my palette. So just a little bit, I'm going to use one big one and two like smaller ones. Into those two smaller ones. Now, this is the beauty of acrylic paints. Um, they mix really, really well and you don't have to do it onto the canvas. You can do it right onto your palette. So I'm going to put a little bit of black into one and I'm going to put a little bit of white into the other. Just a little drop. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm just putting just a small amount. I'm going to take my paintbrush and I'm going to mix these. So we're going to leave that one in the middle, this blue one right here, we're just going to leave that alone. We're going to take the white and the blue over here and we're just going to spin it around into each other real gently until you see them sort of form this lovely light blue color. And I'm going to give my brush a good rinsing. So right into that cup of water it goes, and then onto that paper towel to dry off what remains. And then we're going to do the same thing for the black. You want to make sure you don't have any water left on your brush. And we're just going to go do this, and we're going to make a real dark, dark blue color. It's going to almost look like black, but that's okay. It's just going to be a nice dark color. And now we have three different shades of blue, and we're going to get started using those three different shades. So once again, we're going to just rinse off our brush. If you don't rinse it off regularly, you're going to start to have buildup and then you're going to have colors mixed that you don't want to have mixing. So I am using a canvas board, but if you have paper at home, maybe that's all you have. Um, you can see I've actually done a test of this already just using a thicker paper. Uh, acrylic is heavy enough that you don't want to be using computer paper, but if you have cardstock or watercolor paper, something along those lines, something that's just got like the weight to hold that paint, you're perfect. Um, I'm just going to use the canvas board today because it sits up really nicely on my easel. So I'm going to start with our first color here, which is this nice dark shade. I'm just going to take a little bit of that and I'm going to start going across the top of my, my board here. You can sort of see it, that it's it's just a dark bluish color, and that's okay. And we're only going to put it 
Oh, what is that? Maybe a fifth of the way down. We're not going to put too much on there. And I already think it looks like I have a little bit of water on my brush. So we're just going to dry that again. All right. And then we're going to take the solid blue that we have. And we're going to just start applying that as our next layer down. Now, when I start putting this on here, I'm going to build it up first into this darker shade. And that's okay. We want to have it just sort of layer up here. And I'm going to do a few coats of this because it's applying very thinly. And I probably would like it to apply a little bit more, a little bit more thickness to it. Um, I'm going to just add it on there. And when you're making your brush strokes, you don't want to stop halfway through or you're going to end up with these weird little spots that just don't look natural. You want to take it all the way across, all the way across. And like I said, feel free to just keep blending it up and blending it down. And you're going to see this nice, nice effect. It's going to look real natural like you're looking at the sky. And I'm going to keep going with this blue. I'm just going to keep going. And right now I'm not worrying about rinsing my brush because I'm not too worried about the colors getting mixed up because they're on the canvas already and we want it to look as natural as possible. And we're just mixing and we're just taking it across the sky here. Now with acrylic paints, do be careful not to get it on your clothes. It's going to come off your skin's very, very easily, but when you get it on your clothes, it tends to stay. Um, if you do get a little bit on you, go rinse it off immediately. Um, if not, I would probably recommend maybe wearing some clothes you don't care about or, um, you know, if you have a smock. <laughs> so I'm just going to keep working this in. You see how nice and bright this blue is getting down here. And we're just going to keep letting it do this going up. Maybe I want to give it a little bit more definition. I'll take some of that dark blue again. And maybe I'll start back up here again. And just make it a little bit darker. With acrylics, they do dry quickly. But if you work with them while they're still wet, you can still change it around a lot on the canvas as you go along. I'm just going to blend it all on up. To get a little bit of that color down here, that's okay. We'll just go back over that. I'm just going to allow a nice, nice blue sky to start to take hold here. Okay. All right. So you're probably wondering what we're doing with this lighter color. Now, you don't have to rinse your brush right now. It's okay if you actually just dip it in. I'm just using the edge here. And I'm just going to do a little dip into that. So I just have it along the edge of my brush. Not too heavy, not too thick. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to take it across in various parts up here. And you start to see some of that lighter shading just start to break in a little bit. It just creates a, you know, a little bit of light effect into your canvas. It may be so subtle you don't even notice it. And if it's too bright or too white, then you just go back to your original blue and paint back over it. So it's like, oh, it's, you know, it's just too, too much light. Well, we want to make it a little bit darker. It's a little later in the day. So right now I'm just allowing a nice buildup of the various shades of blue onto this canvas. You know, when you look up at a sunset, it's never just set like blue and then pink and then purple and then it's, it's always nice and blended. So I'm just going to keep blending. It's also very relaxing. If you've never done this before, I think you'll find it's, it's actually just a really relaxing exercise to do. Maybe a little bit more of that light shading in. Just creating a little bit of light. Okay, so I've got, I got a decent amount of blue onto this canvas. I've taken it down. I've left the last third blank for right now. And I'm going to rinse my brush. So we're going to give it a good rinse. It's okay if your water's starting to look a little bit murky. Um, as long as you give it a good rinse and a dry, you shouldn't pick up any of that color. And if you do, once again, it's acrylic. You can just 
paint right back over it if you end up with something you didn't want onto that. So my next color I'm going to use, I'm going to take my red. So like I said, this is a cadmium red. If you don't have cadmium red, if you have a different shade of red, that's okay. So I'm just going to put a little dollop of red onto my palette. And once again, I'm just going to put a drop of the white paint on top of it. Just a little tiny bit. And we're going to give this a nice good blend too. So I'm going to make sure that my brush is nice and clean. I don't have any of that blue left on it. And we're going to give this a good mix. So it's just acrylic paint. So all you got to do is just give it a good spin. And I got kind of a lovely shade of pink. Maybe like a hot pink kind of forming here. You know, it's just it's lighter than the red. And if you have a different shade of red, if it's darker than this, just add a little bit more white. If it's lighter than this, just add a little less. And you'll have roughly the same effect. So I'm going to give my brush a rinse and a dry. Dry it off on that paper towel. And make sure that you're also drying your handles too. I've had it happen plenty of times where I dried the brush, but not the handle. And then you have a little drop of water right on down into the paint and then it makes a mess. So for here, we're going to go underneath this blue line. And I'm just going to do a rough little line of this pink right here. And it's okay that it's not going to the bottom. We're still leaving about the last, maybe the last fourth of this just completely blank. And we're going to just start working our way up. So you start down below and then we're going to just work our way up into that blue. And when it starts to hit that blue, because this blue paint is still wet, we're going to get this lovely kind of purplish shade start to happen. You know, because we, we all remember our color wheels, red and blue make purple. And it's a lovely shade. And so I'm just going to work it right on up into there. And I'm just going to let that climb for a little bit. Just going to let that climb on up there. If it looks a little rough, just, you know, work it in with your brush. Let it become much more natural looking. I'm not going to take it all the way up. I'm going to leave some of our blue sky there. But we have, we have this nice pink and purple occurring. And you notice I'm still going side to side. We don't want to have any breaks in the middle of our brush strokes. Okay, so this is our background. We're going to add one more little feature to it and then we're going to pause momentarily just to let this dry a little bit. So we're just going to take our white paint and you just need like a little tiny drop just a little, I don't even know if you can see it, probably doesn't even show up on this camera. It's such a tiny little drop right there, just real little. And here's where our skinny brush comes in. Now, like I said, if you don't have the skinny brush, you can always use the thicker brush if you just use the points. So you can just as easily put a little bit of paint onto the point of your brush and use it in the same way we're gonna use the thin brush. I'm gonna use the thin one for this demonstration. Just going to take a little tiny bit, just a little drop, just a little droplet and that's it. And we're just going to pick various points, almost at random. And we're adding stars into our sky. We're just going to drop them in here and there. Be careful, my brush is separating a little bit, so I'm getting some that are a little bit funny looking. So maybe we'll make that a nice big star. Some stars are closer, some are farther away. <clears throat> Excuse me. Cough into your elbow, guys. So I'm just going to keep working these in. And they can come down into the sunset. Maybe just a few here and there. I don't know if you've ever seen a sunset and saw a really bright star down near the horizon. 
Um, very frequently you'll see Venus kind of hanging out down there. And she's very bright. And she always kind of hangs out down in this zone here. And maybe up here we'll have a little bit more because it's a little bit darker. You know, the southwest skies have very little light pollution in them, so they tend to have a lot of stars. They're very lovely. Okay, we're going to go ahead and just do that. Sometimes when I do these star paintings, I like to paint in constellations that I like. So maybe I'll throw in a little Orion right here. I'll just throw that in right there. It's up to you. If there's something you like, you want to put your sign in there, you can always do it. We have no idea what time of year we're taking this, this image. It's just, it's just happening. Okay, so now we are going to just let this dry. Um, before we get to our next step, you just want to leave this be for a little bit. So I'm going to take a little pause here. I'm going to let this dry for a bit, and then we're going to come in and do our next step. All right, see you in a minute. Okay, so we've let our background dry. Um, probably only took maybe, maybe you let it about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, just let it get nice and dry back there. Um, we are gonna do the last step of this. It's probably the most fun part. Um, unless you're a background person like me, in which case that was probably the most fun. <laughs> so we're just gonna take a little bit of black paint. And I'm just gonna use a little space that's left on my palette. Just gonna put some black paint on there. I'm gonna take that wider brush that I have. Just gonna add some paint. And we have this last stretch down here. We left, I'm gonna say the last fifth of this blank for right now. Um, you never wanna have your horizons go straight across the middle. It just doesn't make for an interesting image. It's always better to have a horizon set a little bit lower if we're going to be concentrating on that sky, um, especially when we're doing a silhouette image, which is what we're what we're doing today. So I'm going to take my black paint and just a little bit above where the red ends. I'm just going to put in a little, just a little thin line to let me know where my horizon is. You don't want it to be a straight line. I don't know if you know if you've ever seen it. flat surfaces don't occur very often. Um, even Delaware has a hill or two. Um, so we're just going to let that be a little bit hilly. And we're going to take our nice thick brush. And we're just going to fill in everything below this line with black paint. And you're going to want to apply it strong enough that you're just you're not going to have any bleed through from that little bit of red or you're, you don't want to have any bleed through from the white. Uh, paper or canvas, whichever you have under there. And we're just gonna we're just gonna fill it in nice and nice and solid, nice and thick here. And I'm gonna go along the bottom here, which you can't see because I have one of these little little holder things in here. But I'm just gonna just gonna fill it all in. I'm just gonna give it nice, nice solid space. And. So I'm sure that this is nice and solid. And if you're having too much bleed through with the red, it might be a sign that you didn't wait long enough for it to dry. And if that is the case, just give it another few minutes, come back to it after it dries and you'll, you'll be able to lay down this paint nice and solid over top of that. Once acrylic paints dry, they're basically set. Um, and if you want to change something, you're just going to have to paint over it. It's very different from using oils. Oils will stay, they'll stay wet a lot longer. Um, and you can kind of go in there and change them around. Now, I still think this looks too flat. So maybe I'm going to put just a little bit more, a little bit more height over here. Maybe I'll have a small hill climbing up over here. Either way, it's just, it's not too flat. And that is our horizon that we just painted in. And you see how much brighter that pink just became because we put that black in front of it. It just made that pop all the more. So I'm going to rinse my brush off. I'm just going to keep rinsing. And I'm going to use the skinny brush. And like I said before, if you don't have a skinny brush, maybe you just have that wide one, you can just use the edges of the thicker brush. 
um, use the corner or use the, the long edge. It's up to you. Um, but I'm going to use this just because I like how I can put a little bit more definition into what I'm doing. So I'm going to just put a little bit of black paint and we're just going to draw an outline. Now, I've personally never been to the American Southwest. I've flown over it once and that's, that's about all I've ever seen of it is from an airplane. Um, so my reference point for the way the American deserts look is somewhere in between maybe Breaking Bad reruns and Roadrunner cartoons. Makes me think though, post quarantine, this might be a place I'm going to take a vacation to. I have a good feeling that maybe it looks like this. So we're going to, we're going to go ahead. We're going to put a cactus in right here. And I'm going to just start maybe, oh, we're going to leave maybe that last third. Okay. Just not touching that and somewhere right around maybe a third of the way down. I'm just going to put a little arch, just the top of our cactus. And I'm going to pull roughly a straight line back down into our horizon. Don't worry if the line falls apart. We'll go back and fix that later. Right now we're just creating an outline. So we have our cactus and the cactus has little arms. So I'm going to look at the one I made before. Maybe I'm going to do something similar to that. And I'm just going to give this cactus some arms and we're just going to, we're just going to gently trace these in. So we're just going to put cactus arms, same thing, put that little arch and we're just going to, we're just going to put in the rough shape of a cactus arm. Maybe up here, we're going to do the same. It's one up top and it's just a little cactus arm. Right? So it's kind of, kind of what you picture in your head when you think of a cactus. And we're going to take our paintbrush and we're going to just follow in between those lines, right up along those edges. We are just going to fill in that space. And of course, if you think he's a little bit wonky looking, we can always go back in. We can add a little bit more to it or, you know, we'll just, we'll just make him work somehow. So I'm going to go in and I'm still using my little brush. And if you start to get too much paint build up, give the brush a, uh, a rinse and get some of that extra paint off of there. Because if it gets too globby, it's more likely to go over your lines. It's uh, sort of like doing a coloring book, except that you're making you know, the image before you color it in. And we're just going to keep painting this in nice and solid. Nice, solid black silhouette. You may hear some meowing in the background. My, my cat has come in to visit me while I'm painting. So if you hear any weird noises, that's just my cat, Freddy, just coming in to hang out. So I'm just going to fill it in, fill it in. kind of what you picture a cactus looking like, right? And then maybe off to the side here. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go over it a little bit. You could always add little spikes if you have a really fine brush, but I think it's okay to sort of just leave it a general shape. And I have too much paint on my brush, so I am gonna give that a little rinse. Okay. So it's a little bit stagnant as it is, and we want to give a little bit of depth to this image. So remember this little hill that we created over here? Maybe we're going to add a second cactus in. Maybe right along this little hill, because this guy's far back, so maybe line up with the bottom of this arm here. We're going to come across, and we're just going to draw a straight black line. And we're just going to make sure that's nice, a nice, solid, but very thin, very skinny little black line. Taking our same little brush. We're going to do, we don't want it to look exactly the same. So maybe I'll start up here. I'll make this arm a little higher, make this arm a little lower. We're just going to paint in these real fine little arms. And maybe I'll give it a little third one, just, you know, a little bit different. there we go and now we have our image and I'm going to add one more little flare to it just give it a little bit more story 
that's one more little thing going on in the background. So I don't know if on your original palette you still have a little bit of white paint. I still have a little bit left. If you don't, just put a little drop on your palette. You don't need very much. You're going to give that skinny brush a good rinse. We don't want to have any of the black paint on this. We're going to give it a good rinse and a good dry. And we're going to make sure that brush is nice and clean. And we're going to take a little drop, just a little droplet of the white paint on the top of that. And uh, maybe a little bit across from the top over here of this, the big cactus, the one that's closer to us. We're going to put a little dot right here. I'm just going to fill it in a little ball. And from that spot, we're going to just gently, very lightly, pull the white paint across. And we get ourselves a nice little shooting star. I'm just going to make sure that it's a nice little definition. And it's it's actually, you want that blue to sort of shine through. Um, just a little, little shape. And you've just created your own desert sunset. I'm going to rinse off my paints and I'm going to let this dry and I'll set it up and maybe I'll put it in my dining room. I don't know. It's up to you guys what you want to do with yours. And if you like this, if you want to try any of these techniques with other colors, you can use a lot of these techniques to create your own images. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this and had fun and I hope everybody's staying well and I'll see you next time. Bye.